Hi everyone, my name is Muktadi Chudhuri. I'm a PhD student at University of Memphis. In this talk, I'll be presenting my paper titled Leveraging Content Connectivity and Location Awareness for Adaptive Forwarding in Indian Based Mobile Ad Hoc Network. These days, wireless networks are everywhere, and mobile ad hoc network is a specialized wireless network which lacks uh, infrastructure, and each node acts as a forwarder or router. They are very useful in many cases, for example, in vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication, military missions, uh, or emergency response. Uh, for example, in vehicle-to-vehicle uh, -vehicle communication, data sharing enables uh, vehicle to accurate information that is not in the range of the uh, sensor, and it can help the vehicle avoid collision uh, and uh, know the road information and change the, the route accordingly. Indian has uh, several unique advantages over TCPIP for wireless uh, mobile communication. Uh, for one, it has a uh, name-based forwarding, which means that the forwarder does not have to know the destination IP address uh, of, the, of the packet. It can just look at the name of the interest and it can forward based on, on that name. And the data packet will, will follow the path that the interest took. And it also has pervasive caching and network layer security. In this talk, uh, uh, so in this work, we uh, developed a forwarding strategy for Indian based Manet that can make a smart forwarding decision with minimal or no routing information. First, have a look at uh, what has been done so far in this area. There has been quite a few related work in Indian, but uh, these are the ones that are more, more, most related to our work. Um, although, uh, uh, Many of these uh, works are uh, specialized for vehicle ad hoc network, but they can be applied to uh, mobile ad hoc network as well. Uh, the first one is uh, VANET via name data networking or VNDN. So here, uh, the forwarding decision uh, is made based on the distance from the consumer. So the further a node is from the consumer, uh, it will wait less time before forwarding. And uh, uh, another one is Navigo. Navigo, uh, Navigo's forwarding decision is based on the location of the data. So a node closer to the data location will be selected for forwarding. PNDN and uh, Navigo, uh, as you can see that both are geolocation based routing. So, uh, so they have some, so they have the limitation that all geolocation based uh, forwarding or routing has. Uh, so that is, uh, they need to resort to broadcast whenever the location information is not available. <clears throat> there is another, uh, uh, forwarding uh, strategy, which is very related to our work, is uh, that is called Strive. In this scheme, they have a score for each node. The score of the score is called the centrality score. Centrality score is the interest satisfaction rate of a node, which is a measure of the connectivity of a node. Nodes share their centrality score, and when forwarding, I choose the next stop based on the centrality score. Since the network topology in Manet is always changing. Um, Steve frequently needs to update the table when it's, uh, while it stores the neighbor's score. And, uh, and the limitation of Steve uh, is the cal calculated score applies to all the prefixes of a node. So it does not take, that, uh, take advantage of the hierarchical data naming of NGN. In this work, we propose a forwarding strategy called CCLA for Manet environment. Uh, it is a table-less, timer-based forwarding where each node takes forwarding decision independently. CCLF uh, uh, does not solely dependent on the geolocation, but it leverages geolocation in forwarding uh, whenever uh, it is available. And similar to Strive, it also uses a uh, centrality score, uh, but it calculates centrality score per prefix uh, while forwarding. Since the forwarding strategy is utilizing the broadcast nature of the wireless medium, CCLF uh, employs node density aware packet suppression mechanism to encounter broadcast storm. Here is a high level and simplified overview of how, how CCLF work. So this is our consumer, this is uh, the producer, and these are the intermediate node. The consumer send out interest, the blue line denotes the interest, and here is the interest count and data count and centrality score and the location information. So zero means uh, uh, currently these are unknown. So once the node receives the interest, they are going to calculate a timer. Since they do not have any information, they're gonna pick a random time to forward the packet. So uh, let's say that uh, node 
node one's uh, timer expires first and it forwards the interest, but it got lost because it do, because uh, there is no neighbor in its range. And the node two forwards the interest and uh, luckily it has some neighbors around its range, uh, five and three, both will receive the interest and uh, three will, and uh, uh, both will uh, calculate the timer based on their respective score. So as you can see that uh, three has some information about the centrality score and the location score, but five do not have any information. So since five do not have any information, it is, its timer is going to be higher than, uh, than threes. So three is going to send out the interest first and which is going to reach five as well because five is in threes range. So five is going to cancel the forwarding of its interest. And the, that interest is also going to reach four as well. And then the four will also calculate the forwarding time based on its centrality score and the location. And then after the timer expires, it's gonna send out the interest to P. So the P is now going to send out the data packet. The orange line denotes the path the data packet is gonna take. So the data, the before forwarding the data packet, the P is going to attach two pieces of information to the data packet. One is the, one is the uh, location, data location, and another is the prefix under which it is uh, serving the data. So as the data packet is, uh, uh, will, uh, will, uh, traverse its way back to the consumer, uh, all, the, all the intermediate nodes will update their uh, centrality score and the location information according to the information in the data packet. So as you can see that all the, all the node updated their uh, information of the centrality score and also the uh, location score uh, for this prefix. To store the part prefix location, and the centrality score, CCLF uses the tree structure. We call this CL tree. Each node in the CL tree has the name prefix and its corresponding score and location. The score represents how successful a node has been in getting data under a prefix. Each node in the CL, uh, in the CL tree calculates the centrality score of a name prefix based on the percentage of satisfied interest for the name prefix and its descendant. When forwarding, uh, CCLF uh, don't use the absolute value of the score, rather it periodically update the smooth score uh, and use that value. We saw in the example that when a node receives an interest, it will wait for some time before forwarding. The timer is calculated based on the centrality score and the location of score of the prefix. And this is how we are calculating the location score. The equation makes sure that the closer you were to the destination, the shorter your waiting time will be. So this is the distance from the node, uh, from this node, uh, from the data location. And uh, this is the distance from previous node to the data location. So in this example, uh, these are the two nodes, N1 and N2, and both got the interest from the previous node P, and this is the uh, data location D. So here in this case, we can see that the N1 has higher location score because it is closer to the data location. After calculating the location score, each node calculates its weight based on the centrality score and the location score. CCLF uses smooth centrality score of the longest matched prefix in CL3. If a node has high centrality score, then for a prefix, it means it has route to the producer which is serving under the prefix, so its weight will be higher. If the location information is not available, weight will be calculated using only the centrality score. Then the forwarding delay timer is calculated by uh, using this uh, weight of the node. Higher the weight, lower the waiting time. Here, uh, T is an upper bound on the uh, small t. The forwarding timer is set to a random value uh, in uh, uniformly distributed between 0.5t and uh, 1.5t. So at the beginning, when a node does not have any information, the location uh, does not have any location information or similarity to score, the w will be zero. So then the small t will assume the value of the big t. After calculating the timer, CCLF schedules the forwarding of the packet based on the timer. Uh, but if it receives the same interest before the expiration of the timer, it takes decision whether to cancel the forwarding of a scheduled uh, packet or not. The decision is, based, uh, is made based on the separation probability uh, 
which is proportional to the number of neighbors of a node. Higher the number of neighbor, the higher the probability of separation. In the exam, uh, so here, uh, the if, if two will have higher probability to cancel forwarding and suppress the receipt packet because it has more neighbors. We have run experiment to find a suitable value for K in suburban and urban environment. We are also using the same packet separation mechanism to uh, for uh, data packet as well. To enhance the reliability uh, of packet forwarding in mobile ad hoc network, we introduced ad hoc link adaptation layer. It sits between Indian layer and data link layer. It utilizes the beacon of the data link layer to keep track of the neighbors in the transmission range. In Manet, there can be times when uh, there is no neighbor around the node. In that case, it is a waste of resources to send the packet. If ad hoc link adaptation layer detects no neighbor, it will queue the outgoing packets. And once it encounters the node, it is going to send, send, send out all the packets from the uh, queue. In addition to that, ad hoc link adaptation layer is also responsible for getting the location information from GPS and attach the location header to the outgoing packet. We added a location header, which has two optional fields, uh, previous nodes location and data location. Interest can carry previous location and uh, uh, previous location and data location in the destination uh, in the in the data packet destination location and uh, destination location and the prefix announcement header is used. It, and each node attaches its own location in the previous uh, uh, previous location field before forwarding and interest. The CL tree is uh, populated by the prefix announcement and the data location uh, uh, field in, in the data packet. This is how the CCLF addresses existing schemes limitation. Uh, uh, compared to the topology-based uh, proactive scheme, CCLF has lower protocol overhead because it, has, it, it does not have any uh, routing messages. Uh, it also infers uh, lower delay than uh, topology-based reactive schemes. Because CCLF uses name prefix-based connectivity code to avoid initial uh, le learning delay. And comparing to the geolocation-based scheme, CCLF has a lower protocol overhead because it uses connectivity code to get around uh, local optimum and flooding. We have implemented forwarding strategy in Indian CXX library and uh, NFD. So we added Indian LP headers in the Indian CXX and the forwarding strategy in NFD and the ad hoc link adaptation layer is implemented in the transport service. We have done simulation using Indian SIM uh, and generated map and traffic trace using Sumo. And uh, to evaluate our forwarding strategy, we use this matrix. So interest satisfaction ratio is the ratio of the data packet the interest got back and the, and the interest that was sent by the uh, consumer and the data fetching delay is the is the is the delay incurred uh, by a data packet uh, when it, before, before it uh, got back uh, to the consumer and the message overhead is the total number of interest packet and uh, uh, data packet in the network uh, during the time of the experiment we use a vehicular ad hoc network as a case study to evaluate the performance of CCLF. Vanet is a specialized uh, uh, mobile ad hoc network where nodes move with high velocity. Many uh, vehicular ad hoc network applications are time sensitive, but vehicular connectivity is typically short-lived, which makes it difficult to fetch data on time. Run, so, so running the experiment in this uh, vehicular ad hoc uh, network environment gives us important insight into the CCLF's performance. So these are the communication parameter setting and these are the traffic parameter setting. Uh, we created a three by three grid uh, road topology. Uh, the area of the grid is uh, 300 by 300 uh, square meter and the speed of the vehicle is uh, between seven to 13 meter per second. Before running the experiment, uh, we wanted to see how the number of neighbors varies for various traffic condition in urban and suburban setting. Uh, the grid road topology simulates the urban environment and two lane road topology mimics the suburban setting. In the table, we can see the uh, results. Then we also run experiment to pick a suitable value for uh, K in grid topology. The figure shows the effect of setting the suppression constant to be uh, 0 0.04, 0 0.08 and 0 0.112. Uh, 
on the performance of CCLF in grid road network. Based on the above result, we, decide, we decided to use uh, k equals to 0.12 for the remaining experiment, as it gives uh, a, a, a satisfaction ratio as good as that of flooding and reasonable delay stretch, but has the lowest protocol overhead among all the cases. These figures are showing the performance comparison among CCLF, VNDN, Navigo, and flooding when uh, geolocation information is available. We use the grid road network in this set of experiment. Uh, there is one consumer and one producer. Consumer is sending one interest per second. We can see that uh, CCLF, uh, the CCLF's uh, satisfaction ratio is higher than uh, VNDN and Navigo and almost uh, same as flooding. Moreover, CCLF has uh, much uh, less protocol overhead than the others. And as for the delay, it is, uh, its delay is, uh, its median delay is almost same as the others, and it has lower, uh, lower 95th percentile delay. Here we ran experiment in the same setting, but compared CCLF with a central test score based strategy called Strive. Here we can see that CCLF has much higher satisfaction ratio than Strive. However, Strive has lower protocol overhead and delay. It is attributed to Strive's unique nature mostly, uh, but we have also run experiment for multiple consumer and multiple producer where CCLF showed much better performance. Please uh, refer to the paper for detailed discussion on the results. Uh, to conclude, uh, as you can, uh, as you can, as you as you saw from the result that CCLF incurs much lower protocol overhead due to its uh, less flooding, density aware packet suppression and packet queuing at ad hoc link adaptation layer. CCLF incurs uh, lower delay because name prefix based connectivity helps uh, to avoid initial helps to avoid initial learning delay and to find better connected path to the producer. Our future uh, works include study different ways to calculate uh, forwarding timer and uh, suppression probability and offer guidelines on setting CCLF parameter. Uh, thank you.